questions. Um, first, which agency within this whole investigation determines where the resources are going? The precious resources you guys keep talking about, who determines where those resources are going? Which pathway gets more resources than the other? Do you see what I'm saying? Well, um, okay, so what we've been trying to figure out as a group uh, coming together is um, how to test, what should be tested and when. Right. Health is in the lead on, the, on decide, defining that. Uh, right, and we're all questions. agreeing here that we think it's the air more so than food and water. Right. So who can make those resources go more toward the air testing and the urine testing than the food and the water? Well. From, from the perspective of trying to make sure we address the whole picture. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, Elizabeth may believe one thing, you know, we all you may agree. believe the same thing, but we want to make sure that we um, don't leave any All right, and, and, we, and I understand right. that, but we also don't want to stand here and keep getting poisoned while we're waiting for our food to get tested. <laughs> when we all know it's our care. That's what I'm getting at. Okay. I want this investigation to be as short as possible with the best results as possible, just like everybody else. Right. So I'm just wondering who decides where the resources go? Well, some of it is I'd like to go to those meetings to help, you know, further that along. Okay. Maybe she can be our community member. I mean, I mean you guys are going to have like monthly meetings and minutes and that kind of thing, right? Don't know yet. Okay. Don't know exactly what it's going to look like yet. So I, you know, I encourage you. I got it. We were. We are really. You know, I'm. I'm still working on the, the suggestion for earlier in the year. But yes, there will be some. Jay, maybe it would help it. if we explained a little bit how this project is being funded because there is no pot of funds that's been allocated to be distributed to these agencies to conduct okay. this. Each agency is coming up with their own resources to do their own part. The one. Okay. The one agency has been ATDSR that's been actually, uh, I think, allocated a certain portion of funding for it, and everybody else is doing it. So, for example, the work, the resources that we're using to do our pesticide work were resources that we were going to use for testing for pesticides in the Umatilla Basin and the Rogue Basin. We really alloc reallocated those to work in this basin. That's the way pretty much everybody's doing this, they're reallocating resources I internally. See. I see. Um, and, and there's other ways besides just funding that, that EPA is, is using, actually, people resources. So it's going to be EPA staff out here in the third week of August, hopefully, collecting the samples. Uh, and then as a partnership with DEQ, is going to be analyzing the samples. And um, go back to the air question. I know Elizabeth mentioned earlier, and I'll refer back. She is making phone calls, talking to experts in the field on air monitoring, trying to figure out what are the best devices, how do you monitor, where do you put them. Um, looking for resources, too. That's going to take money. We don't have that right now, but we're trying. We're going to, we're going to try to pull that together. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Um, one more question. Is this investigation going to include what information was brought forward about the school well being positive for a here? Is that investigation going to check into that also? Because I think that's important. Well, the water, you're talking about the water testing that was done by the USDA? Yeah. Okay, so well. that, those results were um, were reported out. Uh, we, we went to the USDA and asked them to retest the water because... Um, I think there was some question about whether they knew who was doing this sample collection or not right. in that kind of chain of custody thing. So, they went so the did. water was already retested? The water yes. was retested. By the same people? Uh, well, well, the USDA did the analysis, uh -huh. but the drinking water program, for, uh, the folks from the Springfield office came out and did the, the sample collection. Uh -huh. And they did the exact same way that it was done before through the USDA? Correct. And what was found? It was the same levels. Okay. So it was positive. So it was positive. So, so what's going to happen now? I'm sorry? So what's going to happen now about that? It's below their threshold of what I mean, is say. there a maximum contaminant level or benchmarks for a here in water? No. Zero. 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 I didn't think so. So what are we going to do about this? Hang on just a second. So there, there is. There, there is a benchmark, and, and the level that was in the school of water was below that. That threshold. And so all our parents are okay with that? Our kids are still drinking poisoned water? I mean, We're not okay with Nobody's that. come up and tried to... Do anything about this with you guys? I mean, I'm just wondering. I think the point that Greg made earlier, uh, you know, is, it was a good one, and that is that it's not at all unlikely um, that we will find pesticides soon <laughs> wherever we look. You know, the the point earlier about how much pesticides are right. in the and in the water of a school drinking well is completely and totally not acceptable. Period. Anyway, I hear you. That's right.
I'm grateful that you see all these state agencies working together and, and talking about working together with the, uh, the folks who aren't the state agency because I really feel like it's going to take a whole group to um, balance the effects of um, people with money. Not that we have many games, but you know we are. Anyway, uh, I have a question for the Forestry Service. I think it's totally linked to this. They have an issue scan every two years, the Department of Forestry, and this is where the public can get involved. <clears throat> and I know when I got involved in that level, went to a meeting, and it was at least four years ago, and the, the issue scan is published, and the biggest um, issue on people's minds that uh, rode into that or came to meetings was monitoring of the impact of the huge amounts of chemical herbicides on public and private land and how that affects the macroinvertebrates, the fish, the wildlife and people. So my question for the forestry service, that was four years ago, what action have you taken after that issue scan? What have you actually done? Uh, for monitoring? To address, address those issues. Over the past two years we have done no monitoring because I do not have a monitoring program. It was, um, we cut 40% of our staff uh, during the last biennial reduction. So for monitoring, we didn't do anything. We kept the stream temperature monitoring program going through grant funding. We have had our monitoring resources rebuilt and we have, uh, are starting to rebuild our monitoring program. We have been working with DEQ for under the Pesticide Stewardship Partnership where those studies fall where there's forested lands. As I said, they focus more on agricultural lands, but some of the basics include forestry. So we're monitoring for pesticide applications in uh, those pesticide stewardship partnerships where we can just use our human resources to get the monitoring. Well, thank that. you. Have you found out anything? Um, we have found, detected in one of the... Can you tell the results? Well. Basically, in all of our, I think in all of our pesticide stewardship partnerships, we found pesticides in the water. In a few of them, I think three of them, we found pesticides that have exceeded some of our water quality criteria for aquatic life. In none of these projects have we ex found pesticides that exceeded human health criteria. So that's kind of where we're at with this. Uh, in groundwater in the Willamette Valley, for example, we've tested hundreds of wells. We've found 17 different pesticides. 33% of the wells in the Willamette Valley probably have pesticides in them. Almost all the concentrations are below. Uh, any established health criteria. The issue of health criteria, I think it's important to understand, is it's based upon demonstrated some kind of an adverse impact. There's no way that you can guarantee any concentration in a water is absolutely safe. You can only show where you've had an impact that can be scientifically and reproduced, demonstrated and that result be reproduced. It's very difficult to prove that something does not have a potential impact and that's, so standards are changed all the time. Health advisories go down I've never seen one go up. They often do go down based upon additional information. So you just need to understand that as our regulatory programs are based upon these criteria, and the criteria are based upon the best information we have at the time that they were developed, so that's constantly changing. Well, thank you. So when you found uh, levels higher than safe for aquatic life, what action did you take? So in those situations, I mentioned this earlier, what we do is we call it a pesticide stewardship partnership program and we work with the uh, users in those areas to try to figure out how they're being applied. So for example, we've done a lot of work in orchard areas. And so in those areas we've gone and worked with the growers and we've been able to change how they apply. We've established some buffer zones. We've changed nozzle size so the droplets are bigger and they don't drift as far. So there's a number of best management practices. And in many cases, we've changed pesticides from something that's more toxic to something that's less toxic. Mm -hmm. So there are a number of things that are, can be done in terms of best management practices that reduce the potential impact. But, I, but they're not going all the way to eliminating pesticides in the environment. As long as we're using pesticides in our environment, we're going to find them in our environment. Right. So going back to the issue scan, right. you haven't been able to do any work on what the public told you they wanted you to work on. Did you pass that on to other agencies other than DEQ that this is, that is an issue? No, uh, we did not. And um, I think I am the one that invited Day to, Day came to us and asked, how do we get this in front of the board? forestry, I suggested the issue scan. It's come up in two issue scans. Uh, we've brought these concerns to the Board of Forestry over those years. Uh, we have a strategic monitoring plan 
and there are things that we don't know that are under our regulatory authority. Um, and so we are looking at impacts on riparian areas. I don't think we found any forest pesticides in water above the threshold. Is that correct? That's right. We, we found uh, atrazine and hex, hexazinone in, in a couple of situations where there are probably forest reapplications at, at very low concentrations, uh, not below any criteria that have been established. Did you test right after the spring? No. That, not in that particular case, we didn't. We have done uh, monitoring right after the spray in riparian areas where we, because the, the thought there is that you would have a pulse in the stream water, you know, water, and so mm -hmm. uh, you would expect to see a spike in the water. So we did do a monitoring study after we initiated our um, chemical rules and we looked to try to pick up that spike. So we tested uh, periodically through that that period of time for the forest pesticide uses, and we found one, but not at uh, levels above the threshold. Was that the study done about 10 years ago? Yep, you haven't done anything since? No.